Welcome to Tuesday's edition of COVID-19. Korea's daily cases have been hovering in the mid-300s in recent days amid a flurry of events, including the start of the new academic year today and the launch of the country's vaccination campaign last Friday. And we have more on that campaign later on the program. Here first is our Kwon so with the pandemic updates. So let's begin with the local coverage. All right, Sunny, we're back from a long holiday weekend due to the March 1st Independence Movement Day, which also means there were less tests conducted over this holiday. So that means the number we're seeing here, 344 infections this Tuesday, may not reflect the current coronavirus situation here in the country. Uh, but we do have a drop in domestic transmissions compared to yesterday, while we have a slight rise in imported cases. And for the uh, third straight day, we are seeing numbers here in the 300s, but uh, we still have to monitor the situation as the week progresses because over the past two days, there were some 16,000 COVID-19 screenings conducted, which is way less than some 38,000 uh, tests on Friday. So the last workday that we had. Now, if we take a look at our map now, we have triple digits in the capital Seoul and Gyeonggi-do province and double digits in Incheon, as well as Southeast and Daegu and Busan. And with that, the total number of infections stands at 90,372. We just hit the 90,000 mark a day ago and the death toll stands at 1,606, although uh, the daily increase in deaths has been declining in recent days. And today, let's also check the number of vaccinations completed since Friday because that was the day when Korea's vaccination program kicked off. Now, the total stands at 23,080 with 1,442 people inoculated in the past day. And along with the vaccinations, this Tuesday, a new school year has kicked off here in the nation with an expanded number of students taking in-person classes. And in line with the current social distancing measures, kindergartners, first and second graders at elementary schools are now able to go to school every day. High school seniors continue to be exempt from attendance caps. For the rest of the students, one third can be in classrooms at elementary and middle schools, two thirds at high schools, meaning a mix of on and offline classes. Right. So, uh, meanwhile, on the international front, schools are reopening as well. Restrictions are being eased. But the concern is that global COVID-19 cases appear to be on a rebound. Right, Sunny. For the first time in seven weeks, the global number of COVID-19 cases is on an upward trend, according to the World Health Organization. And its chief says it is disappointing, but not surprising. Some of it appears to be due to relaxing of public health measures continued circulation of variants and people letting down their guard. Vaccines will help to save lives. But if countries rely solely on vaccines, they are making a mistake. And another official at the organization says it's premature and unrealistic to believe that the COVID-19 pandemic will be over by the end of this year. But what can be improved is the number of hospitalizations and fatalities is what the official says. So let's take a look at the numbers here. Some 306,000 new infections were reported in the past day and almost 7,000 new fatalities. And if we take a closer look at some major outbreaks, the U.S. at 29.3%. 3 million cases followed by India and Brazil and uh, the UK here at almost 4.2 million cases has a new concern over a new variant which was first detected in Brazil currently at almost 10.6 million infections. And those are the updates I have for now but I'll be back in a bit after the government briefing. Back to you Sunny. All right so uh, thank you for now. Right then, here on the local front, we are entering day five of our inoculation drive. And for more on related efforts, I have Om Ji Young here in the studio with me. Welcome, Ji Young. Hi, Sunny. Right, Ji Young, do start with the latest on our vaccine rollout. Sure, Sunny. At around 9 a.m. last Friday, South Korea began administering the first doses of COVID-19 vaccine developed by AstraZeneca. Um, residents and staff at long-term care facilities were the first in line, but they had to be under the age of 65. Um, just 24 hours later, at 9 a.m. Saturday, the first jabs from Pfizer were 
handed out to frontline medical workers. Around 289,000 people in phase one priority groups have given their consent to be vaccinated, which is around 94% of those eligible. According to the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, 1,400 um, 42 additional people received their shots on Monday, bringing the total to more than 23,000. Among them, more than 22,000 received the AstraZeneca vaccine and 895 got Pfizer's jab. The government says a total of 156 of those who have been vaccinated reported mild reactions, including a slight fever and muscle pain but none of the symptoms have been severe. Let's take a listen to what KDCA Chief Jung eun kyung had to say about this on Monday. All of the reported side effects were symptoms that commonly occur when the body is generating immunity. Most of them disappear within three days and do not require treatment. One of the most feared side effects of vaccinations in general is a serious allergic reaction called anaphylaxis, which can trigger breathing difficulties and send the body into shock. Anaphylaxis usually occurs within 30 minutes of the vaccine being administrated, and thus people had uh, people have been advised to stay for half an hour after getting their shots before heading back home. In case of any emergencies, first aid and CPR can be administered at the vaccination centers and ambulances will be on standby. I see, Jung. Well, that's good to know. I also hear healthcare workers were able to squeeze more doses from each vial of vaccine. That's right, Sunny. By using a special device called low dead space syringes, they were able to increase the doses that they can um, obtain from a single vial. Um, compared to standard, standard needles, LDS syringes have less space between the needle and the plunger to minimize waste. When using a conventional syringe, a vial of AstraZeneca can yield 10 doses, while six doses can be extracted from a vial of Pfizer's vaccine. But by utilizing LDS needles, some medical staff were able to obtain up to seven doses from Pfizer bottles and 12 from AstraZeneca's. But health authorities say how many vaccines are extracted from each vial will be left to the discretion of vaccination workers and they'll not be pressured into obtaining the highest number of doses from uh, their supply of vaccines. Take a listen. It does not mean we will give specific instructions on the number of doses that must be extracted from one vial. It just means we'll try to reduce waste and make use of leftover vaccines. However, she added that it is not allowed to mix the residuals in different bottles as they can get contaminated. Right. Chen, one final question before you go. I understand researchers are poised to conduct studies on those who've already been vaccinated soon. That's right. Um, health authorities are to uh, conduct tests on about 200 people starting this month uh, who have been inoculated with AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines. They'll study the rate of antibodies as well as the duration of immunity. Second and third clinical trials of AstraZeneca's vaccine indicated that the vaccine provides about 62 to 70 percent of protection. For Pfizer's vaccine, it's about 95 percent. Um, it takes around a week or two after inoculation for antibodies to form. The government plans to finish um, administrating the first doses for phase one priority group by the end of this month. Also, the government is sticking to its primary goal of achieving herd immunity by November by administrating the first doses on 70 percent of the country's population. I see. All right, Cheong, thank you very much for that update. Thank you for having me. Right, it's uh, time now for the regular briefing on the pandemic situation here in Korea for this Tuesday. Now, do you remember COVID-19 prevention measures have been extended for two more weeks. The briefing is about to start. We'll come back to you afterwards. We have a director, Lee Sang-won, for the explanation on the regular briefing. Let us now begin our regular briefing for March 2nd, Tuesday. As of today midnight, we have a total of 319 new local infections and 25 new imported cases. The total caseload now stands at 90,372.
and a total of 30,996 tests have been conducted yesterday. And at the makeshift testing centers in the capital area, we carried out 14,775 uh, tests, uh, identifying 53 confirmed cases. We have 268 more people making recovery and being discharged, while 7,428 still remain in quarantine. And we have four more uh, patients with critical or severe conditions standing at 135. We had one fatality as of yesterday. And uh, here are some major updates on our domestic infections. First, in the metropolitan area, in relation to Seoul City's Nuwangu District Daycare Center, we identified additional 13 additional cases. And in total, we have 14 cases being confirmed to date. And in Seoul's Yongdungpogu District, in relation to a restaurant, we have five additional cases. In total, we have 17 cases being confirmed to date. And in Gyeonggi-do Province, Yangju City, in relation to a steel manufacturing company, we have a nine additional cases and a total of 33 people have been confirmed to date. And in Gyeonggi-do province, Itan city, in relation to a family and social gathering, we identified the first index case on the 26th of February. We identified 10 additional patients and a total of 11 people have been confirmed to date. And in Ichun City, in relation to a box manufacturing plant, we have four uh, additional cases and a total of 26 have been confirmed to date. And in Gyeonggi-do Province, Suwon City, in relation to a Taekwondo studio and a daycare center, uh, we identified the first index case on the 27th of February. We have a 27 additional case, a 20 additional cases, raising the total to 21. And in Gyeonggi-do Province, uh, Yongin City, in relation to a nursing home as well, as a uh, daycare center, a total of 55 have been confirmed to date. And moving on to Chungcheong province. In Chungcheong Namdu province, Asan city, in relation to a boiler factory, we have five additional patients being confirmed, and a total of 203 people have been confirmed to date. And in Chungcheong the province, Chincheongun county, in relation to a market, we have uh, 12 uh, cases being confirmed to date. And moving on to Honam area, in Gwangju city, in relation to Seogu's call center, we have four additional cases being confirmed, and in total, we have 69 cases being confirmed to date. And in Jeonbu, um, we have a Jeonju city in relation to the sports facility there, we have a total of 56 cases being confirmed to date. And in Gyeongbuk province, uh, in Daegu, uh, Bukgu province, we also have a university campus meeting, and we also have 14 additional patients being confirmed, and a total of 15 have been confirmed to date. And in relation to an hospital in Daegu City, Bukgu District, uh, we have one additional case, a case raising the total to 44. And in Gyeongbuk, uh, Ulsangun County, we have the families and spa facility, we have one additional case raising the total to 107. And Gyeongnam Province are as follows. In Busan, Yeongdogu District, in relation to an hospital, uh, we identified additional cases raising the total to 26. And in Busan, Bukgu District, we have the uh, funeral hall and Ulsan City's golf uh, facility. We have additional uh, six uh, additional cases, raising the total to 51. And Gangwon-do Province, in relation to a church in uh, Jeongseon-gun County, we have two additional cases, raising the total to 39. And today, in your press kit, we did not include this information. However, we identified uh, that at a makeshift uh, testing site, at Dongducheon City, we identified about 80 confirmed cases, uh, and these um, testing centers were targeted for foreign uh, workers, foreigners. And as for the details and the sources of infection, we will provide you the, with the latest information going forward. Uh, before and after the Lunar New Year holiday, we have identified some uh, cases, family cluster infections, and here are some uh, analysis. And we see uh, that during the first week of February, we had about 120 cases stemming from family-related gatherings. However, uh, this uh, jumped to 184 during the Lunar New Year holiday and also jumped even further to hover around 230 uh, after uh, the Lunar New Year holiday. And it 
jumped over a two folds from uh, early February, and we see uh, that a majority of the cases, about 56 percent of them, uh, were related to family gatherings and relative gatherings as well. And we also identified um, and transmissions of the virus uh, stemming from uh, them with local transmissions stemming to uh, uh, office spaces as well. However, uh, these family uh, infections have decreased to about 144 now, thanks to your participation in quarantine measures. So we ask for you to practice social distancing measures going forward. Uh, lately, uh, the COVID-19 global trend, are, uh, uh, we provide you with some uh, latest information. According to the WHO data, we see uh, that uh, the uh, total uh, caseload now hovers and now tops 113 million, and we have about 2.5 million uh, fatalities, and thus we see a slight increase of the data uh, of the daily tally. And in the U.S. and Africa, we have seen a slight decrease decline in the new cases. However, Europe, Middle East, and also in Asia, we see a slight rebound in the number of new cases. And starting from January, we have seen a continued decline in the number of cases, and this has been stalled uh, during uh, February. Moreover, for the time being, uh, the WHO sees that we will also see the stalled and continued uh, uh, these outbreaks going forward. And globally, we are um, not yet seeing of the full results or the effects of the vaccinations uh, being yielded. And so this is why we need to take particular precautions going forward. And here in South Korea, we have rolled out our own vaccination program. And we believe uh, that uh, globally, uh, the safety and the efficacy of, vac of uh, these vaccines have been testified and confirmed. Uh, so this is thankful. However, uh, we need to also see more and need more data to be accumulated as for uh, these long-term effects of these vaccines. Even after inoculation, it is very important uh, that we carry out uh, face mask wearing and other basic fundamental uh, quarantine uh, measures as well. And until we reach unheard immunity after inoculations, we need to continue to uh, be on alert and take particular precautions. And next, we have some updates on the inoculation of COVID-19 vaccines. As of March 2nd, midnight, 1,442 more people have been administered with the vaccine, and a total of 23,086 people have been administered with the first dose of COVID-19 vaccines. And by uh, centers, we also identified uh, that over 13,000 people at nursing hospitals have been uh, receiving uh, these um, jabs, and also so uh, 4,000 at care facilities and 800 uh, medical staff members who are treating COVID-19 and about 18 of uh, the uh, first responders have been receiving uh, their jabs as well. And we have seen a total of 156 adverse effects being reported and most of them were mild symptoms including a slight fever and also muscle pain and nausea. And we are carrying out the vaccination full-fledged and among other countries that have already carried out their vaccination programs. Uh, there are many countries that are discussing and mulling over a possible easing and relaxation of the quarantine measures. However, we see uh, that the st a steady uh, decline of the co global COVID-19 cases has made a rebound and has veered uh, for the first time in seventh a week. And we can also learn from the uh, case of Israel. Uh, Israel has carried out uh, stringent uh, lockdown measures uh, after the vaccinations and it carried uh, and its uh, reproduction rate was about 0 0.8. However, uh, lately uh, this increased this was increased to about 0 0.9. Uh, this was due to uh, the uh, relaxation and the easing of the uh, face mask wearing and of social distancing measures even even after uh, inoculation. Uh, now that we have the full-fledged vaccination of the COVID-19 vaccines and we have a new school year uh, being kicked off here in South Korea, we ask for your participation in the quarantine measures.
A march is a beginning of many aspects, and today, this morning, we saw many uh, elementary school students going to school, and we also saw many middle school students also going to school as well. And as a health official, I feel a heavy responsibility. And we also want to ensure a safe school year for our students. So not only the students and the faculty members, but also all of the parents uh, need to comply with these quarantine measures. First of all, before going to school, we ask for the parents to uh, monitor uh, the children's uh, health uh, conditions and symptoms, and please update this information on uh, the uh, self-diagnosed application. And second, if you have any uh, clinical symptoms, uh, please do not go to school or kindergarten and have your kids tested as well. And also, if you are at school, we ask you to, uh, get, uh, to uh, wear a face mask and also disinfect and uh, ventilate your school area on a regular basis. And all of the faculty members also need to carry out um, the guidelines and education on the quarantine measures for both faculty and students. And the vaccine uh, inoculation is a beginning to uh, reach an end of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And it is our hope to return to uh, the pre-COVID-19 uh, period. And with uh, highlighting uh, the uh, mutual uh, respect, we ask you to also comply stringently with quarantine measures. And the government will also exert our all-out efforts uh, to return to a state of normalcy. Thank you very much. Right, that was Lee sang -won with Tuesday's afternoon briefing. So what did he have to say? Let's start with the major outbreaks here in the country. There are a variety of new infections, small and larger cluster infections. Uh, but let's take a close look at the boiler factory in uh, the Chungcheong Namdo province, which now has surpassed 200 cases in total with uh, a few more cases and the total now standing at 203 and also more cases linked to a call center in the city of Gwangju. And uh, one number that's not been in a press release as of yet is at a makeshift screening center for foreigners, some 80 infections uh, were confirmed. So uh, he mentioned that further, further information on that will be provided. Now, as the new school year has kicked off today, he also asked for compliance with preventive measures at schools. Students, faculty, and also parents uh, should not uh, let their guards down. And on the vaccine front, he updated the vaccination numbers we talked about before. The numbers uh, still remain uh, same, so I won't get into the details there, but he said that effects of vaccinations around the world has not yet led to a decline in cases, so that is why social distancing remains uh, really crucial at this point. I see. All right, so thank you for that. I'll see you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Right, staying on the local front, not everyone has been included in Korea's vaccination campaign. Pregnant women and children are among those who've been excluded, and we tell you why in this report. Korea's long-awaited public vaccination campaign finally got underway on February 26. However, pregnant women and minors will have to wait for now until they're cleared to get their shots. The Korean government says pregnant women can get inoculated if the benefits of receiving a vaccine significantly outweigh the risks, but it generally does not recommend that they do so. But what about for women who are planning to have children in the near future? or new mothers who are currently breastfeeding. Children and teenagers are mostly ineligible to receive a vaccine in many countries across the globe. 
However, some exceptions do apply, with the US FDA clearing the use of Pfizer vaccines to adolescents over the age of 16, and Moderna vaccines on young adults aged 18 and above. An advisory panel of Korea's drug regulator has also recommended the use of Pfizer vaccines on children aged 16 and above. 16세 이상의 적절성을 포함한 임상 시험 결과에서 확인한 예방 효과를 토대로 신청 효능 효과와 동일하게 16세 이상을 대상으로 허가하는 것이 타당하다는 의견이었습니다. Global pharmaceutical firms have already launched clinical trials to study the effects of vaccinations on underage subjects. There are no vaccines available for children under 16 years of age. Um, that means that we do not know the appropriate dose for the children. We do not know the immune responses for children, and we do not know the safety profile for children. However, um, clinical trials are ongoing. So if these studies go well um, and we get promising results, Hopefully, we will be able to have a vaccine available for children over 12 years of age. Also, if you're on medications such as anticoagulants or immunosuppressant drugs, be sure to let your doctor know before getting your vaccine. For those who have just received cancer treatment, it is recommended that you get your vaccine after regaining your strength. 백신 접종 중에서 가장 고민하시는 분들이 암 치료를 받고 있는 분들입니다. 우리가 항암 치료를 하는 도중에는 백신 접종을 좀 연기를 하시고요. 항암 치료가 끝난 후에 몸의 백혈구 상태가 정상화된 이후에 백신 접종을 해 주시는 것이 면역 반응도 정상적으로 만들 수 있고 항암 치료 후에 오는 후유증도 예방할 수 있겠습니다. It is hoped that future studies will eventually make vaccines available to pregnant women, children, and everyone who might need them. More than 23,000 people here have received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine as of early Tuesday. Now, for more on the campaign and related news, I have Professor Chong Ki Sok from Halim University. Welcome back, Professor Chong. Good afternoon. And I also have Dr. Yu Byung-uk from Sun Chen University Hospital. Good to see you again, Dr. Yu. Professor Chong, what is your assessment of the local vaccination progress? Yes, the inoculation uh, planning uh, is uh, uh, going very smoothly, uh, it seems. And uh, as you said, uh, over 60% has uh, been uh, injected uh, with the new type of vaccine, uh, working in uh, nursing hospital and nursing homes, uh, along with the residents over there. It's a good news. And uh, adverse event is reported very low. It's quite acceptable so far. Even though you have a very serious adverse event, but if it is acceptable and expected one, then uh, you don't worry much about that. And the compliance uh, rate is also very high. Uh, in nursing homes, over 90%. Uh, hospital doctors, like in my hospital, over 90% of nurses and doctors agreed to get a, a vaccine, uh, either AstraZeneca or Pfizer. 
So the compliance is very good and the uh, process is going smooth. Uh, one most important thing is the supply because uh, everybody knows that the vaccine is quite safe, uh, not in this country, but also all over the world. So the demand is very high over there and supply is uh, relatively short. So the government should, uh, should try very hard to get as many vaccines as possible in, in as early time as possible. Right, that is true. Dr. Yu, authorities have recorded, meanwhile, about 150 cases of vaccine side effects, including fever and headache. How do you respond to this finding? Well, this time, I can tell this is not an unusual thing because since 2009, we are getting used to have a flu vaccination for annually, every year. After that, we got it a little bit of painting, swollen up at the side of the injection, and my head and weakness. But usually we are get used to about the flu vaccination. We must have it more than six, five years old. Oh, but this time, this very new vaccination, that's why we are so afraid about it, but it's not very new. Comparatively for the side effects were reported, but this time government and also the participant, they be reported very precisely. That's why number seems to be like little higher than usual flu vaccination, but usually same. Uh, I can tell one more thing. HPV, women's cervical, cervical cancer vaccination was very necessary and we know this is how useful, but little bit, this one is a little bit more painful because conjugation type one. But I can tell compared to COVID-19 vaccination and HPV both are safe, but HPV vaccination a little more painful than COVID-19 vaccination. I see. Uh, Professor Chang, as mentioned earlier in our program, healthcare workers here have managed to extract seven doses from one vial of Pfizer's vaccine using our special syringes. What are the implications of this reality, especially keeping in mind the global short uh, su supply challenges that you mentioned a while ago? Yeah, it's definitely good news. And the low uh, dead space syringe is quite a fascinating one because uh, you can use all the uh, fluids uh, in the syringe uh, to use uh, to make make the minimal uh, dead space over there. When you see a syringe, you, can, you can see a protrusion uh, uh, at the end of a barrel, and that is the dead space. If you push the vaccine uh, through a needle, then you have remained a fluid in the in the protrusion space. Is the adapter, so. The plunge is made uh, to push uh, the dead space volume uh, until the end of uh, 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 the protruded one. So uh, that is a very saving uh, uh, vaccine uh, the amount. But uh, if it is obligation to use seven out of uh, uh, six uh, total doses, it could be a pressure either to uh, nurses or doctors. So uh, six doses per of Pfizer is optimal and 10 doses for AstraZeneca Optima. If you have uh, enough uh, remain uh, in, in, in one uh, ample, then you can use another one or two shots. Uh, so uh, it is not an obligation to use, uh, use the end of one. And if you use uh, multiple uses uh, in, in a single buyer, uh, you usually use it 10 times in a single buyer. That means you push your syringe 10 times if you use it 11 or 12 times, that can also raise the contamination rate. So then uh, it's nothing. So you have to be very uh, cautious about that. So 10 doses from the AstraZeneca vial. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, like uh, Professor Chang has mentioned, Dr. Yu, authorities have allowed healthcare workers to squeeze extra doses, but they're not planning on revising um, their current authorization of 10 injections from the AstraZeneca uh, vial and six from Pfizer's. What are your thoughts on this? Well, that's why Korean Health Authority also announced since there are no rule and no plan to push the, the real world the doctors and nurses. Because what Professor Chang, he commented about it, this one is the originally we planning to one buyer from Pfizer for the five persons, one buyer from the AstraZeneca for the 10 person originally. But I also, I do the having injection to myself, to my hands. So that time I have experience, sometimes there are a little bit left for the each bio, for like the vaccination for hepatitis A or the typhoid, isn't it? Why? Because usually the, the manufacturing companies, they prepare for little bit more remaining because of planning of the can be loss of the death space. But the kind of fortune we have the new weapon 
so the low dead space syringe you can make the, this one. But we have some evidence about the contamination and hepatitis C, the, the multi-use and the multi-punctured the needle. That's why we have to be take care about it. Anyway, if you have an opportunity in, the, in your world, yes, we can use the one buyer for the seven person in the Pfizer one. But we can use for it in under safety for the five to six person use one. But if we have opportunity with the safely, that time we can use one more extra for, to depend on the case. I see. We spoke about this a while ago also, um, Dr. Yu, but some pharmacists in the US had talked about combining the leftover uh, vaccines in the vials. What are the dangers of combining the vaccines? Well, combined vaccination, because, because of global shortage of vaccination, and we are worried about the supply, which means I hope not happen in Korea, but it's a real world, it was England that happened because even the AstraZeneca manufacturing from the Oxford the technology, but manufacturer, fact, manufacturer factory in Korea, in, in India, in Belgium, it's not in the England. So which means supply is not guaranteed 100%. That's why Sputnik Big V, Victory, and AstraZeneca and Janssen, they will plan to have the mixed world how coming on. This day already the trial started in Russia and Bahrain, so we expected how come, but we don't know yet. So until now, Korean Health Authority and myself better to keep on the same brand on the schedule. That's better, but nobody knows what happened. There's a shortage of supply. That time we can watching and waiting for the answer from Bahrain and Russia. How come? Right. Professor Zhang, a study in Scotland shows by the fourth week of the first dose of AstraZeneca's vaccine, hospitalizations were reduced by 94%. What are your thoughts on this? That's a very good news. And I read the preprint uh, paper before the publication. And original study was prospective study uh, to look at the uh, effectiveness of both Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccine uh, regarding hospitalization. Uh, one, more than one million uh, people were recruited in that study. Actually, more than five million, but the uh, uh, preliminary study uh, shows uh, one million and 140,000 uh, people recruited. And at that study, AstraZeneca uh, vaccine could reduce hospitalization uh, by 94%. It's amazing uh, news. And uh, Fi Pfizer won uh, 85%. So it looks uh, quite similar, and uh, uh, AstraZeneca seems uh, far better than uh, Pfizer, but it's, it's a, still a preliminary study. That means if you can reduce the hospitalization by 80 or 90 percent, you can reduce the uh, medical burden, you can reduce the uh, economic burden, and uh, most of all, you can reduce your symptom, and you, you are free from uh, uh, getting to uh, uh, hospitalization. So this is a very good news. And AstraZeneca, if it works there, uh, there's no reason why it doesn't work here in Korea. Right, which is why countries like Canada and France have approved the use of AstraZeneca for all adults. Do you see this approval as perhaps affecting our own decision here in the country? Yeah, I heard uh, from a KDCA uh, that uh, uh, it is uh, considering very seriously to, to get the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, apply to uh, uh, 65 and older uh, before the end of March because we are uh, expecting to get the result from a clinical trial uh, in in United States but uh, who knows it, it it will not coming uh, by the end of this uh, March uh, so by that uh, if you look at the Scotland study there is no reason why we we do not inoculate uh, the elderly people who are most vulnerable people uh, uh, in, in COVID-19. Right. Dr. Yu, Janssen's COVID-19 vaccine has been authorized for emergency use by the US FDA, and it's also under review by authorities here. I understand there are high expectations for this particular vaccine. Please tell us why. First of all, somebody who are confused why we don't have the Janssen and Johnson & Johnson. Actually, it's the same one. Johnson & Johnson, Janssen, is the same, same line. So why I'm welcoming about this, First, in the US FDA, they approved the third one. So first, in the Pfizer and the Moderna is a messenger RNA type one first, but this the vector type is approved first time. 
it, which means we can expect the AstraZeneca 1 Spectre type 1 will be approved by American FDA soon, I expect it. Second one, other type of vaccination, they do the clinical trial for first, second, and third phase of trial with before variant, the spreading. But Janssen one, they did it to third phase the trial with the variant one together in, especially in South Africa. So that's why relatively this effectiveness is, seems to be like little more than Pfizer and Moderna, but this is a kind of real world data. So also they show us, but this is working for the variant, especially for South African types one. That's why we can expect it and welcome it. And last, let me say, once enough to boosting your immunity, this is more convenient than others. I see. Meanwhile, Professor Chang, what is your assessment of the current COVID-19 situation here in the local front, where we've been witnessing daily cases within between the mid-300s and 400s over the past week? Yeah, it seems quite stable, but still in, we are in a very dangerous uh, position because this is the time uh, where, when uh, we can see about 200s or high 100, uh, uh, late 100 but we are still seeing 300, 400 every day. And even though we have uh, 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 maintaining the still same distancing level, uh, there is no weapon to decrease the current status. So that's why I keep insisting on uh, uh, imposing uh, sanctions uh, on, on the facilities and on people who are violating the current uh, uh, rule. So if it is not done uh, uh, very strongly, then uh, we have no, no, uh, no way uh, to, to, to see the continuous decrease of uh, uh, daily occurrence of COVID-19. Right, that is true though. Dr. Yu, speaking within your capacity as a member, I believe, of the National Committee on Immunization Practices, when can we expect to see public inoculations leading then to a tangible drop in daily infection numbers? Well, we can Think about first the seasonal change because Korea we are going to have the spring and the hot summer time. Usually, someone still say this doesn't affect by the seasonal, but I believe the seasonal one can be affected because hot summer is coming. Probably the number of the COVID-19 cases come from its decline. But at the same time, we going we started the vaccinations, but and we having the achieve around the 20 percent over the whole we are planning. Maybe the decline more fastly. But now I can read over the Chile's cases in South America. They're going to have the winter season soon. Their case is, is now is a st stable, which means it's struggling for the number of the vaccination and the seasonal change is getting colder, but did not increase like the last winter in the South Hemisphere. So I can expect it at least 20% more than the plenty of the vaccination. That time we can have some curves goes down. Professor Zhang, speaking as the former director of the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, what are your thoughts on the potential variables then to our efforts to secure herd immunity by this year? Uh, the most important variable is the supply. Because uh, uh, they say that uh, we are having uh, about 10 million uh, doses uh, uh, in second quarter, but uh, nobody can uh, sure that we can get those, uh, that amount of uh, vaccine in, in, a, in a proper time. And uh, even though people are very uh, uh, trusting on the vaccine, uh, but if something happens with any certain kind of a vaccine, then the trust will be dropped down. So that is uh, uh, connected with uh, a decrease of a compliance. And if we ha even though we have uh, 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 a proper amount of vaccine uh, by the third quarter or fourth quarter, then that is another problem because uh, we'll have to do uh, more than 50 million, uh, uh, almost 30 million or 20 million uh, injections uh, in a very short period of time. So uh, maybe the doctors, nurses uh, uh, cannot do all the things uh, in very short time. So anyway, uh, by the November, uh, can we get 70% uh, of uh, our people vaccinated? And actually, we will have 56% uh, of uh, uh, people who have antibody in their blood. So who knows? So all you have to do is uh, get as many vaccines as possible in, in very early time. 
Right, to ensure supply then. Dr. Yu, what are some of the tasks that lie ahead as we seek herd immunity uh, by the end of this year, in your view? Well, I believe we can make some kind of herd immunities end of this year. I believe that. But first of all, we have to know why we need it. We can imagine there are 100% in the playground, but how many people need an umbrella when the case of the lane? Yes, better to we put on the umbrella for everybody, but 60, 70 percent of the people put on the umbrella put on, we are safe from the lane. So not for you, not for me, for us, it's kind of vaccination is for, for the living together. So I believe we can make it. Why? We did it already since 2009, annually for flu vaccination. That really helped the people vulnerable, who are the aged people, less dying from the flu so we can overcome with the vaccination. Right, Dr. Yu, as always, thank you very much for your optimism and for the umbrella imagery. And Professor Zhang, thank you for your insights today. Thank you. Right, one out of every two Koreans in a recent survey believes the COVID-19 vaccine is a public responsibility to ensure the health of those around us. And on that humane note, we end today's coverage of the pandemic. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.